gooseneck is on the outside. The top round is also known as the inside round. The gooseneck is known as the outside round. Alright, so it's got two names. Um, the gooseneck contains three components. It's either sold whole as a whole gooseneck, or it's sold as this. This is called the bottom round flat. This is called the eye round. And this is called the heel. So you have the bottom round, eye round, and heel. Bottom round, eye round, heel. Bottom round, eye round, heel. In the gooseneck. These cuts are not expensive. They're very reasonable. In retail, uh, they'll sell this as an eye round roast beef. Let me Right here. No, my shoe is hard. I just had it in my hand. All day. Oh, there it is. Um, this, when I look at this, quite lean, right? And also, when I look at this, when I bend it, I, I mean, it's got a little bit of fat in there. When I bend it, you can see the muscle fibers, okay. and they're relatively close. So later on, when we start to lecture, we talk about muscle bundles, this is what I'm talking about. See how there's kind of like a muscle bundle right there? Yeah. Um, that, the way they're connected together, there's like little tiny bits of collagen. You can see it when I break it open, right? It's like a plastic wrap around each one of those bundles. Yeah. Uh, that's what makes this relatively tough piece of meat. Right? It's not a super tender piece of meat. It's relatively tough. Um, it would be okay for roast beef. I could slice it very thin. You know, ro once it's roasted, I would slice it thin for sandwich. It would be pretty good. All right? But there's not a lot of fat in it. Uh, there is a, uh, a chunk of fat that sits right in here when it's whole. It has a little gland in it. So we would always take that gland out. This piece, the heel, is like shank meat. See it? So it makes a nice substitute for shank meat if you're uh, in need of shank meat and you can't get it, but you can get heel meat, it's the same thing almost. It, it sits right up against the shank. So that's that's a good stewing piece. This thing, this is where it butts up into the sirloin. And when I cut it like this, if I'm slicing this as a roast, right? If I cut it like this, I'm cutting it with the grain. And that's relatively tough. You see how stringy that is? See the stringiness of it? Yes. That's relatively tough. So if I'm cutting this piece of meat, I would cut it the other way. Now I'm cutting it across the grain, right? And now you can see it'll kind of break right apart. It's not so stringy. So when you're cutting a piece of meat, you always pay attention to the grain. If I was going to divide this into roast, I would cut them like this at a slight angle. And then I would take them and square them up a little bit, you know, just to kind of shape it. And then I would tie it across that grain. A lot of times you'll see bottom rounds sold and it's tied like this. And people say, oh, I hate bottom rounds, it's always tough. And if they would have just taken the string and tied it the other way, you know, now you'll have a relatively tender roast. So the bottom round, I typically use it as a braise or a pot roast or sour broughton, that sort of thing. You know what sour broughton is? Like a pot roast. You know what a pot roast is? What's a pot roast? A cauldron. In your case, you would be cooked in a cauldron slowly. People with ears all around get out. See that? That's across the grain. That's going to be relatively tender. So, pot roast, I would take, I would brown it, caramelize the exterior, create the uh, Maillard reaction, you know, the caramelization, the browning. And then fill it with liquid, maybe not submerge completely, let it simmer a long, slow time in that liquid in that stock, add in the potatoes, the carrots, the celery, blah, 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 and you got pot roast. Right?
but pot roast can be in any number of dishes that you create using that same method. You know what I mean? You don't have to do the standard style of celery. You know, in my culture, we would call it Wiener Sauerkraut, which would be a Viennese style soft roast, which is pot roast. And we would flour it with a lot of uh, paprika and uh, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and then brown that off, and then cook it in a stock, and you would add lots and lots and lots of onions to it, and a little bit of uh, red wine, and thyme, and bay leaf, and just simmer that really slow, make this nice rich sauce, and then you would thicken the rich sauce with the sour cream at the end. And make this like miami rich. How is it different from a braise? How is a pot roast? That is a pot roast. A pot roast is a braise. Okay. Braise is more general. You know, if I right. cube a little piece of stew, right, that's one form of a braise. And then this would be a larger braise, right? You could braise short ribs. Braise is popular, right? So when you use that term braise, that's what I'm talking about, long, slow cooking. Um, then you have slow poach, like sous vide. That's another long, slow cooking method. Then you have barbecue, you know, we're going to grind this whole thing so it doesn't pull it, but it's um, I could take this bottom round, I could split it like that, and put it on my barbecue and do it like a big, brief, big brisket and do barbecue beef out of it. You know what I mean? You know how I get a little bit barbecue on the outside and we mop it with sauce. That's oh. the same basic cooking method. It's long. So you're letting the muscle fibers break down in that cooking method. All right? Mock brisket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could use that as like brisket too. Um, they'll make this into corned beef as well. In fact, I have one in the back. Oh, we got to get cleaned up. Yeah, brisket's dry though. There's no liquid involved. Yeah, but you're mopping. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying. Right. But don't think.